Welcome to The Next America. I'm your host, Jamie Lynn Walnow, and today I am so pumped because the ultimate start of this whole show came from a dream. I had a dream that The Next America was coming through media, it was coming through musicians, songwriters, singers, and it was coming through creatives. And so if you are tuning in and you love supporting the arts in any way, or you feel creative, or you want a creative breakthrough, Welcome to The Next America, and by all means, who else would I ask to be on here other than Michael and Meredith Malden? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> um, okay, so I just want to dive in. Well, let's like, let's, let's just dive it. in because we could go for hours here, so let's just go. So The Next America, you guys are traveling around right now with Sean Foyt and team, and you're ministering to cities. You're seeing a lot of amazing things happen. So. I do, I do want to make sure we hop into that, but also um, let's talk to creatives. Let's talk about what our part is in the next yeah. America, because um, I want to say if you're tuning in, our job is not to respond and react. Uh, our job is to be the people that others respond and react to yeah. because we're on the front lines with heaven. So you guys are phenomenal at that. You, you totally pave the way. You take creatives out of their comfort zone because it's what it requires. You've done it in my life, in my husband's life. You've impacted me greatly. So I would love for you guys to... Um, dive in first and let's we'll talk about what you're doing in traveling but what do you see with creatives in the next america well i i think one is a, it's important to address creatives because you know i think you mentioned this god's a creative right mm -hmm. it's like the first aspect of his character or his nature that we see in the bible in the beginning god created the first five words of the bible before we know him as lover healer friend deliverer whatever yeah. he's a creator and the church used to lead out in creativity. And so this is really important for me because when I was a kid, I didn't grow up in the church. And so I was discipled by Martin Scorsese, Al Pacino, Snoop Dogg, like all the, <laughs> the people that the world promotes yeah. that gave me my worldview. And it made me crazy, made me a criminal, made me misogynistic. And, and when I had this radical encounter with Jesus, I was like, man, where are the godly role models and the godly creatives that are telling his story in a unique, cool, relevant way that reaches the next generation so they have something to look up to. Because I was looking up to all these characters in film. Yeah. You know? And um, because I just had, I had nowhere else to, to see good leadership, you know? And right. family. I came from a broken home as well. And, um, and so through, through this process of coming to the Lord, I kind of had this, this theory that the world was doing a much better job at discipling the world than the church. And I met, had a, this past year, I had a chance to meet with George Barna, who's done more research on church trends and, you know, why millennials are leaving the church and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I asked him, I go, okay, what, what is the greatest influence upon our culture? And without a beat, he goes, I've identified three tiers of cultural influence. And in the top tier, of it, he's identified seven things as the most influential in the transformation of culture. Five out of those seven are media related. Wow. The other one is family. The other, the other one is policy and politics. In the middle, you've got business, education. Uh, but the bottom of the bottom tier, the least effective in the transformation of culture, per se, mm -hmm. is the local church. And I was like, man, we're, we're missing this. you know, Because we, we've been entrusted with the greatest oracles, the greatest stories the yeah. world has ever known and seen and heard. Yeah. And we're just not in front of people's faces as much as we should be on these screens because people are spending, you know, anywhere from eight 11 to 11 hours, hours a day in front of screens. And so we- It's like a full-time job, y'all. I mean, more than. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. So we have to Overtime. be because you, be, you become what you behold. That was yeah. my story as a kid. Yeah. You know, I became a gangster because I was looking up to the ones that I was watching on TV. And yeah. so um, we just have a passion to raise up those who are going to tell his stories in, in this format, like what you're doing documentaries, film, music, whatever the arts are, because the arts are what get right to the heart, Yeah, you know, so. That's so good. That's a lot, I just said. No, it's good. That's, <laughs> I mean, it's not a lot. That's good. It's true. What about you, Mary? What do you, what do you see in the next America? Yeah, I mean, I, I echo what Michael said. I feel like there's been a fear within the church to create. We have watch the world do it and go, we've separated and we've said, sorry, we can't do that. You know, like, mm -hmm. and we've let them take over, yet we still consume it. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a whole, it's not just non-Christians who are consuming the art that's coming out. And so where are those who are being raised up to create art that has life and hope yeah. 
Yeah. Like we have life and hope living with us, within us. I mean, and I, I, I always go back to music, but I'm like, my, my daughter's looking for fun, like pop songs to listen to. And half the songs that have the great beats and the fun stuff, the, the, the words that are coming out of it, I just can't let my kids listen to. I'm like, what am yeah. I discipling them in? And so I'm like, we should be writing those songs. Yeah. We should be as people that have life and hope and Jesus has answers and all these things to these questions, then we should be writing the songs about having fun and life and, and joy and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And so it's like we've we've shunned it mm -hmm. and then we haven't created ourselves. Yeah. And so I feel like we have to, as the church, create space for creatives to create, not X them out of the church, but actually bring them in and help yeah. disciple them and encourage them so that they're not sheep among wolves, yeah. you know? So when they're feel called to Hollywood, then they actually have a support system so they don't get sucked in because yeah. it's easy. I've watched over and over as people have gone in and tried to conquer that world by themselves. And you just, it's, yeah. it's, it doesn't usually work that way. We are meant to go together, you know? Yeah. And so you have to have a strong support system. And so the church needs to be raising them up. The yeah. good thing is like to speak to the next America within this, the church is beginning to see this, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I had this vision reached recently, which speaks to this. And we were living in South Georgia and it's a bunch of old churches with steeples, yeah. you mm -hmm. know? And I was flying out of there to Atlanta and I saw this vision of these church steeples that were actually like, they were like the closed buds of a flower. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the Lord was saying the church, they've remained closed because the church has been so afraid of the culture. Mm -hmm. And so we've kind of isolated ourselves to prevent the culture from infecting us. Yeah. But I saw the shift happening where the glory of God that he placed within inside of us began to come out and be expressed through creativity. And those steeples began to open up like a flower. Yeah. And I saw them beautifying their communities and their neighborhoods with beautiful art, which is what we're called to do. Yeah, right? totally. Yeah. You know, I love that too. It's like um, people always make fun of Christian movies or whatever it may be because there's a level of excellence that isn't com comparable to what mm -hmm. we're used to seeing in the world you know like these amazing movies but the thing is we have the talent we have the ability and one of the things i'd like to see is first of all for those of you tuning in you may be like i love consuming entertainment and i want life-giving entertainment i have money to give but i don't have the skills to give but it takes a lot for creatives to be able to create with God on yes. this level to be able to hit that level of excellence. It's millions of dollars to create a feature film with that level of excellence and talent and skill. And so I want to encourage you to ask the Lord how to sow into creatives as an artist. Like if people didn't buy my artwork, I would be a starving artist, yeah. but because I create with the Lord and I trust in him, he's always made a way. And that's another thing for creatives. I think we attract what we think about. And I used to have a poverty mindset. And when I realized my value as a creative, which the two of you have helped me with, so much and I love being around you because you always, you have that um, rich, wealthy, beautiful prosperity in a healthy way, like everything you touch with God, there's favor, there's goodness um, because it's from him. Mm. Like I know that I'm going to attract heaven and he's gonna open the doors. And so that's another part of what I wanna see um, creatives break through. And so for you guys, when when you see this fear, you had, you had mentioned fear and we see fear a lot right now, yeah. but my goodness, you guys are traveling around right now, demolishing it. <laughs> like you're so, you're doing Malden.com right now, the MaldenFamily.com by leaving everything you know, packing everything yeah. up in your car. I saw that. <laughs> um, playing Tetris, as you said, fixing everything up in that car. And you're demolishing fear. I love hearing what you guys are doing on the front lines and how you're addressing creatives. And I want to go to a quick break because I want to dive more into this. So please stay with us. We have a lot more coming up for you as creatives and how you can support the next America. This is God's heart. This is God's dream for his people, for us to run together creatively with the ultimate creator. So stay tuned and we'll be back after this message. We are demolishing the works of the enemy and we are making Jesus Lord again in this amazing nation. And we're doing it through media. My name is Jamie Lynn. I'm the host of Set Apart Podcast and The Next America Show. I cannot do this without your support and your help. And my dream and my desire is to hire a team to provide content for Christians to take down the enemy and make Jesus Lord in every sphere of influence. If you'd like to join us, go to jamielynnwallnow.com today and join our tribe. Welcome back to The Next America. I'm your host, Jamie Linwana, and we're joined by Michael and Meredith Malden. They are on the front lines of creativity, and I will tell you, they have impacted my life and my husband's life abundantly. They have launched us into creativity. They have 
helped us get past our comfort zone, being uncomfortable and seeing what's possible with God by stepping past fear. And so if you're tuning in and you love supporting creatives and you are a creative, thank you. We have a word for me. We believe God is moving powerfully through you in the next America and we need one another to accomplish this. And one of the things that you were saying earlier, Michael, you were talking about the world discipling versus the church discipling. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about how you were so discipled by the world growing up, but you were like, whoa, we need to be discipled by the church. So can you speak more into this? I know you've done a little bit of studying on this topic because I think we yeah. could use a little bit more information here. Yeah, um, I read a book called The Power to Change the World by James Davison Hunter. And he's the guy who coined the term culture wars. And in his book, he really goes into looking at what the largest secular organizations versus the largest Christian organizations, where they're giving their monies, you know? Where, where's those do where are those dollars going? Where are your money going? And the top five secular organizations, that one of their biggest gives is to arts and media, about $200 million a year, just the top five. Mm -hmm. And he began to look at the Christian organizations, the top Christian and Catholic, like the, this long list of them, uh, they give about $20 million a year towards it. This is five organizations compared to like the majority of the Christian and Catholic. And so the majority of Christian organizations we give towards uh, international missions and that kind of thing. Right. Or it's Louis Palau organizations, big crusades, right. uh, which are these kind of these, the crusades are great. They're, people get saved, but then how do people sustain their faith and get their minds renewed and transformed? Yeah. And they go to church one day a week and then all week long they're staring in front of screens, right? Yeah. And so the cool thing is I think, I think the church is catching on to that. Yeah. onto this, you know, and people are stepping into the arts and media game and more films are being made. And so that's yeah. really encouraging. I love that. I think too, it, it does require so much money for creativity to happen. Like we, yeah. we really need support and we need one another. Yeah. And, and I think that's what's so, what's so valuable too. And if we're spending that much time on our phone, yeah. <laughs> why would we not sew into organizations? I mean, that's why this show is created and it's evolving and it's fun, but I'm doing what I want. Like I'm doing what I want to see. Like yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't see people talking about here, here's the problem. Here's what, what can happen and here's how we can do it. Yeah. And so yeah. I wanted to be part of that. And, and I have a diverse group of people coming on. So for people, I, I know there's solid ground for others to sow into. And both of you are participating in things right now that I think are awesome. You have a new e-course called the mm. I am journey, yeah. which is solid. Can't imagine, guys. I can't even express to you how ridiculously awesome it would be to be discipled by Michael Malden, okay? Uh. And we're going to hop into that. I'm serious. And then, Meredith, you've started Song Labs, and you're yes. traveling, and you're doing these songwriting workshops all over the nation, and the songs are going beyond the nation, and you're getting to see creatives come alive and find their passion and create the sound that's in heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. And so I want to dive in and talk practically, like... Um, as creatives, you guys have been following the Lord, and this is what you're doing now, but since I've known you, you've done a million things because you're being led by the Lord. What does that look like to be led by the Lord, and how did you, like, I know you've done a million things, but what is this journey like for each of you of that? How do you know when to follow God? How do you know when to create that next thing with Him? And so many people get paralyzed, they get stuck with fear or apathy mm -hmm. yeah. in the process. I mean, for me, I, I just always go back to what is he saying right now? You know, what has he said? If he's not speaking about what's next, you know, then what am I supposed to be stewarding right now? Right. And so there's been seasons where I'm not at a church that I'm leading worship at or, and I'm still going to steward. If I feel called to be a worshiper, if I feel called to be a songwriter, then I'm still going to songwrite in faith that this no is what the Lord looking. has called to me to yeah. do it. Now, I also know about myself that I'm not... Uh, self-motivated, like self-disciplined in that way. So what I do is I create to where I have accountability, where I do it with other people. Wow. So I then bring other people around like, hey guys, let's write together. That's what I did at the Upper Room when we first yeah. started. Nobody was songwriters at the Upper Room. Yeah. But I said, hey guys, I want to grow as a worship leader and I want to grow as a writer. Let's all meet once a week and let's write songs and share them. You know. And so I think sometimes if you start small, if you feel like you're going to be, you know, this, if you feel you have a call to be an actor or whatever else, are you working on monologues? Yeah. Are you reading? Are you studying? Like, I think it's the stewarding now because he's so wants to use us in what we're called to do. And it's just like stewarding the thing until it opens up. Like you, you're doing that right now. Yeah. You're stewarding what you've, um, what the Lord gave you through a dream. Right. And, and it really is powerful to watch what he does when you steward well, the revelation he gives you yeah. right at that moment. That's so good. So good. What about you, Michael? How would you speak into that? Um, I mean, I think that that one is just, it's so important. Yeah. You know, if you're called to do it, are you going to do it? Yeah. You know? And 
I know for me, I think I had to just dig deep into my heart and into the Lord's heart because it says that he knit us together in our mother's womb, right? So he put destiny within inside of us. Yeah. And when you're doing that thing which he created you for, like there's just a sound that comes out of you that rings true. Yeah. And life, the light in your eyes. And so yeah. I, I went through a real tough season where my brother committed suicide. I was, my, my job got shifted around. Like everything was kind of collapsing out from underneath me. And in those seasons, you know, you have a choice to either run to things that comfort you and soothe you or yeah. you run to the Lord, right? Yeah. And so I've just been walking with the Lord long enough. I got nowhere else to go. I've tried all the world stuff. And <laughs> we know just, where that path goes. We, we know where that path leads and I've hit my head on that wall many times yep. and it doesn't feel good. And so I was like, I just pressed into God and I, I really asked the Lord this question, like, what's the big thing that you want to accomplish through my life, right? And through answering that, it got me off of me and got me onto like, what's his heart for me? How has so he wired good. me and created me? Yeah. And one of the things, like one of my purposes is to transform culture through the arts. Yeah. And so I'm able to filter my life through that mission because Jesus, he understood who he was. He was clear in his identity, yeah. right? He had seven I am statements. He knew his purposes. He had multiple purposes. And I think for some people we're like, what's my life's purpose? Well, what's your purpose for this season? Yeah. That may be even a more simple question for some people because right. it may look different than your overarching life's purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Because Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost, to destroy the works of the devil, to give life, life abundantly, make disciples of all nations. He had all these things that were part of his purposes. Yeah. And then he had a plan to walk it out. Mm -hmm. You know, first Judea, then Samaria, then the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. In relationship with God, so he was able to be moved by the Lord within mm -hmm. that. So all those things together allowed him to live offensively with God. Yeah. And like what I'm so passionate about right now, it's like I'm... I'm tired of Christians living on defense, speaking even to myself. How yeah. life just comes in and, it, and it, it hits us and we just react to the world as it comes in. And we're just getting knocked around. We're yeah. getting knocked around by media. We're getting knocked around by culture, by the political yeah. spirit. And, we're, and this fear is just coming against us, man. I don't want people to be able to smash fear in the face, yeah. crush this thing, and let's move forward into all that come God on. has called us to. The challenging part about that is he's given us a promised land that's before us. He's like, man, it's right here. It's milk and honey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But there's giants in that mug. <laughs> <laughs> and they ain't cute. They're not cute. You're They're like, scary. God, wait a minute. What, this is what you've given me? I love milk and honey, but this part, I don't know about that. <laughs> but what I realize is those giants are there to strengthen us to inherit the promises so we can handle the weight of the blessing. Because it's harder to live in blessing sometimes than it is, you know, living for the blessing. When yeah. it comes, that's when people fall. They get complacent yeah. and in order over else. So, I don't know, that's kind of a long answer. No. but. It's good. Um, yeah. I'm like, come on now. I'm about to throw something. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Um, okay. I, I love talking about this because you guys are so good at practically giving creatives the tools to move forward. And you've literally, like what we're talking about this and I'm like, literally what you're doing right now for songwriting with Song Lab and for the I Am Journey, are, it is a solution for how to move forward with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love. And, and everything that the two of you do, it's never about you. And as creatives, we have to be really careful about that. I know I'm super creative in many different ways. I'm not saying that to be like boastful. I'm saying like sometimes it's hard to know what to do. And sometimes it's hard to do it because I'm afraid what people think about me. But when you realize it's not about you, and these two have taught me this too, it's not about me. It's about him. And when I realize that what he's given me is to help bring people to him. It gives me the courage to move past the fear. And Michael, I've, I've heard you say this a million times, but your destiny is on the other side of your fear. And the two of you have constantly, since I've known you the past eight years or nine years, you have moved past fear and you've listened to the sound of God and the fruit from it is ridiculously awesome, which we're gonna hop into that here more after the short break and we'll be right back. If you want to help shape the next America by restoring Christian values in media and every sphere of influence, come join our tribe today. There's a level of support for everyone out there. Go to jamielinwallnow.com, support. What's up? Welcome back to the next America. I am here with Michael and Meredith Malden, and they have created a place and space for creatives to be part of the solution in the next America. What we do today affects America tomorrow, and we're on the front lines, and these this is a couple who is not afraid to go where no man has gone before. I just had a picture <laughs> when you would walk through the prayer room, you know? You remember that? I did. We were like, Walked through the prayer room. The, the, the three of us got to serve and work at Upper Room together. It was ridiculously awesome. We also grew up together. Pretty you much. know, we, that's where we, we came fam. That's where <laughs> we came fam. Um, but 
Michael, you have the I Am journey, and Meredith, you have Song Labs, and you're both in this together, of course, too. But will you guys speak into how, like, what is the I Am journey? Because I think that this is something that is a powerful tool that people are tuning in. It's like, man, as a creative, we get paralyzed, we get stuck, we don't know how to move forward. Yeah. And part of that is just not knowing who we are yet yeah. or who he yeah. is. And both of those things are very important. So will you speak into that? Yeah. I, you know, being at the Upper Room, we had a residency program where we would get people really connected to the heart of God, hearing his voice, getting set free, delivered. And then they get out of the program and they were like, okay, now what do I do with my life? And I think yeah. we experienced that on the mission field. We went, went to YWAM when we first got married, got mm -hmm. crazy on fire for God, came back to the States and we're like, okay, now what? Yeah. You know, how do we live? What do we do? Yeah. You know? And I saw a lot of Christians who, who knew God. They knew his voice. You know, they just didn't know what to do with their life. Or yeah. they were just living, reacting to the world and living defensively. Yeah. And I just saw this pattern with Jesus. I was like, man, he knew who he was. He was clear in it. You know, he was clear in his identity. He was clear in how God affirmed him even before he did anything. He was just yeah. settled in his heart. You know, he wasn't trying to live for money or fame or for uh, any of those other things. He was just already at peace with God. Yeah. And then, you know, he was clear in, in his mission and why he came, you know, to seek and save that which was lost, to destroy the works of the devil. I mentioned some of these earlier. Yeah. And then he knew he had a plan to walk it out in relationship with God. Now walk you know, it out. To walk, walk it out. out. I'll walk it out. I'll walk <laughs> it out. So I was like, man, I saw this with, with, with Jesus. And I was like, man, Jesus lives inside of us. He wants us to advance in the earth and take territory yeah. and not be reacting and just getting beat up all the time. And then I also saw Christians struggling with sin a lot, too. And yeah. I was like, you know, there's a scripture that says, without prophetic revelation, people cast off restraint or people perish. And I was thinking about the casting off restraint and the flip of that verse. Okay, so with prophetic revelation, people put restraints on. Okay, so imagine you're, Mike Tyson's about to go fight again. He's, you know, he's, he's, getting, he's, training, he's getting trained up. So Wait, imagine, is he really? Yeah, he really is. That's he's awesome. about to fight Roy Jones, Roy Jones Jr. Wow. So I was like, imagine if you have to fight Mike Tyson. You're going to be so focused that you're not going to have time for sin. You're not going to have time for if guys who look at porn and girls and drugs. You're going to mm. be like... I'm going to fight Mike Tyson or I'm going to die. Yeah. So you're going to eat, you're going to train, and you're going to sleep, basically. <laughs> right? So restraints come on. And yeah. I think so many people, they don't have a target. They don't know what they're aiming at in life. Wow. And so it says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And I think we're falling short of the glory because we don't even know what we're aiming at. Yeah. And so the I Am journey is for people to get settled in the heart of who they are, to get free of bitterness and forgiveness, and to get confident in who God says that they are. They knit them together in their mother's womb with destiny and purpose. And yeah. so what is that? Yeah. And then what are some targets you can aim your life towards in this mm -hmm. season, you know, so that you can be like, man, I'm going after this thing. Yeah. And how to, de how to deal with the fear as you step out in it. Yeah. Because that's a real thing. I deal with it all the time, yeah. as does she. And when I step out into something new, like making these videos that I was making. Yeah, where I was taking, which are so cool. I was taking, because I take culture. My, my mission is to transform culture through yeah. the arts, right? So I take culture. I take bits of film and music. And so, you know, Jeremiah says he extracts the precious from the vile. And so um, I, I take culture and extract the beautiful things out of something that you may not want your kids to see, but there's truth or some kind of beauty in it. And I use culture to reach the culture that wouldn't really come to the church. Yeah. And, um, and I think it just also just facilitates these beautiful questions for you to go with the Lord. I mean, to yeah. go to the Lord with. Yeah. Because we can't find our purpose and destiny without it being in Him, with Him. Yeah. All things Him. Yeah. And so that's why it's called the I Am journey because He is the I Am, the yeah. great I Am. But it's also about who I am. So it's, it can't be without the other. You that's know? so good. Yeah. You're not you're not fishing for people. You're showing them how to fish. So yeah. So when yeah, you're yeah. gone, totally. they can show people how to fish too, and yeah, we can absolutely. keep it going. Yeah, I say in the journey, I don't have the answers. Your answers are in God. Colossians yeah. three one. Yeah. Your identity is wrapped up in Christ, and I'm just facilitating a process and questions for you to go to the Lord with. Yeah. I love that. It's such a practical solution. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say too, like I'll be I'll be real. I'm like I know there's a lot of e courses out there, but when you told me you were creating an e course, I was like yes because you've impacted my life so much. Both of you have impacted my life so much. And I mean, you did our wedding, you were in our wedding, you pretty much ran our wedding. <laughs> I was watching it the other day. I was like, oh, we had y'all do so much. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, it was but such a fun wedding. wedding. It was it fun, was it was so creative. I mean, yeah. naturally, why, who else would we ask to do all that stuff? No, um, but I, I think it's such a practical solution. We need practical, we need yeah. to be solution because right now we're in the desert and it's either intimacy with God like all the people who pulled away to be with God for the answer and come out stronger, or we're gonna be like the Israelites. Cause we're all in the desert and we're gonna complain. Yeah. And then we're gonna come out and we're gonna be weaker. Yeah. Like we're gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna be relying on our own strength and we'll be at war with yeah. one another and ourselves. So 
Um, I love the practical solution of yes. that because it's 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 real, authentic, and I trust this dude, and I encourage you to sign up for this e-course. Go enroll in it. Awesome. Meredith, yes. Song Labs is another um, solution Actually. for creative. So will you talk a little bit about that and how people can be a part of it? Yeah. Well, one of the things I love to do is, like what you said, is I, I love to take the practical things with mm -hmm. the spiritual side of things. So sometimes, like, we can get super swirly and we just wait, you right. know, and there's par there's power in that. Yeah. But then there's also the stewardship and the discipline of things and, right. and, and doing it in excellence. And so I try to give lots of practical writing exercises, things that we can actually like steward so that when revelation comes, we are ready for it and we yeah. can are better articulate it. Yeah. So I love to give the practical side of things. And then I also love to give that, like, we just worship together and then we do it. Like I'm, I'm not one who likes to go, Hey, I'm going to teach you about this and then go off and do it. Cause I know you won't. Yeah. Most people will not take that information to it. Yeah. So I will teach. And then I say, now we're going to sit down and we're going to do it. Yeah. And you should see the, what people, the faces when people overcome, it's like one of my favorite things yeah. when people have come in and they're like, I'm not really a songwriter. I've maybe written a piece of a song, maybe. And then by the time they left, they've written three songs, Yeah, you it's know, crazy. and the joy that comes from being like, I can do this yeah. and I can bring it back. So song lab is just that it's, it's, um, coming together and I'm just going to facilitate a weekend with you, the Lord and others to go after what you feel called to do I love that. within worship and in songwriting. And so that I have them in different locations. Um, churches invite me to come out there or even, you know, if you're an individual and you have a writer community of friends, like we can come out and facilitate that weekend for you. And it's, I love that such a amazing adventure every time every song is different and they're yeah. so beautiful that's awesome it's, it's amazing she's also got uh, a label out of this deal yeah. and yes. there's releasing new songs <laughs> that are coming out of it out so of the, out of the last three song labs that i did mm -hmm. i took my favorite corporate worship songs mm -hmm. and i invited everybody to come we worshiped together and we recorded it and so they are coming out um slowly we have one coming out this friday and uh yeah they'll be trickling out throughout and then as we do more song labs i'll pull songs and we'll continue to release those because see and look what god did through it being faithful just being faithful and that's the thing keep being faithful and when you're leaning into the lord when you discover how to go to him you can't help but respond to god like you can't help but create, like out of the mouth, your heart speaks and out of that place, you can't help but be who you're made to be. And I found that time and time again. And so Michael, how can people connect with you for the I Am Journey? Uh, yeah, my website's uh, iamjourney.co. Uh, you can also follow me on social media, uh, S. Michael Malvin. Awesome. We have yeah. that at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. Meredith, how can they connect with you? Yes, um, it's Meredith Malden, you know, for Instagram, but mostly for Song Lab stuff, it's going to be Song Lab MSC, and that's on Facebook, and the website is songlabmsc.com. I love it. So. Thank you guys so much. Thank you're you awesome. Hey, you're awesome. I you love, love what you're doing. Thank you. So, so good. encouraging. She's legit. Ah. Okay, guys, what we do today determines the next America, and we are all made in His image, and we get to create the image of God on earth for all to see, to be drawn to, to be saved, to be set apart, to be on the narrow path which few choose, but I believe that we are creating a place as creatives through music, through media, through entertainment, the arts, whatever it may be, where people will see the man Jesus, they will be set free and they will be drawn to the river that can only come from the kingdom of heaven. So would you join us in participating in that? Follow us on Instagram at The Next America Show. You can follow us at jamielinwalnow.com. Join our tribe and help us obliterate the kingdom of darkness to make Jesus Lord in every sphere of influence. We'll see you next week.